Welcome to Flip It Furniture. My name is Amy. Today I'm participating in the Ugly Duckling Challenge. This challenge is hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. The challenge is to find the ugliest piece that you can find, whether it's at a thrift store or a side of the road piece, whatever. It just has to be really, really ugly. And then you have to give it a gorgeous makeover. Whoever does the biggest transformation wins the challenge. There's a ton of other channels participating in this challenge, so I'll leave a playlist to them in the description box, so be sure to check that out. Now, I have to go pick up my ugly duckling piece right now. When my brother bought his house, the previous owner left this piece of furniture in the basement. So we're gonna go and pick it up from their house right now. We just pulled up to my brother's house and we're about to pick up the ugly duckling piece. Now, Joe pulled a muscle in his back so he can't help me lift it. So I think my brother's home. We'll see and hopefully he'll help me out. Let's go check it out. It's a cabinet and it has some old latex paint. So that means... Watch where you're going. Oh my God. <laughs> so that means I will definitely have to strip the paint off. So that's extra paint, but look at the top. Ew. Yeah. This, well, obviously it's going to last down. Well, that's pretty, right? That's super pretty. This is called the Ugly Duckling Challenge, Pat. Oh, man. This is my brother, Patrick. Is <laughs> it? I'll go this way. Right in. Oh, you can slide in with one. Not the mother. My first step is to strip this latex paint off of the piece. When I'm stripping off latex paint, I like to work in sections, so I'm going to start with the front first and then work my way around this cabinet. So I just apply the citrus strip and then I wrap it in plastic wrap and leave it for about 40 minutes to an hour. I quickly realized that I have two layers of paint on this and the citrus strip only took off one layer. So I need to add another layer of citrus strip, rewrap it, and then let it sit for about an hour. Much easier to get off with a second coat. So then I just take my mineral spirits and I gave it a good washing and then when it was all dried, I took my sander and I just started sanding any excess latex paint off. And I had to stop during sanding because I realized I forgot to take the hardware off. This cabinet was pretty filthy and it had been sitting in a basement for probably 20 years. So I had to really, really, really clean it and it did have quite an odor. I finally came to the conclusion after I cleaned it with my TSP cleaner that I would need to hose it down to really rinse it and just really make sure everything, all the muck and grime was off. After it dried in the sun for about five hours, I went back in with some wood filler and I filled in all the holes and gouges on the sides, on the top, on the inside, everywhere, and they were everywhere. I came back about an hour and a half and it was all dry, so I started sanding it with my orbital sander and I used a 240 grit sanding paper. To combat the musty odor, I'm going to spray shellac on the inside of the cabinet and on the cabinet doors.
Now here's something interesting that I did. On the bottom of this shelf, one of the corners is completely broken off and I could have just went in with my Bondo, and, but I tried that and it was gooey and it kept um, coming off a little bit. So I needed something to hold it. <laughs> I didn't have a mold. I didn't have a hot glue gun. I didn't have resin on hand. So Taryn from Elegant Upgrades mentioned that she had used Play-Doh just in an emergency situation where she needed it and didn't have anything else on hand. So I thought, well, I have Play-Doh, <laughs> so I gave it a try. I just stuck the Play-Doh right onto the bottom. I have the Bondo in there, and I let it sit for about an hour and a half. Then I peeled it off, the Play-Doh, which came off actually really easy, and then I sanded it clean. But it worked out really, really good and it came out looking just like it, as if it was in a mold. So thanks, Taryn. And be sure to check her channel out too. She's doing this challenge also. She's Elegant Upgrades, so she should be in the playlist. Now I'm using Dixie Belle's Boss primer in the color gray. I don't have the white. I probably would have used white, but I'm using gray because that's what I have. I'm using it because there's so much discoloration on this um, because we used wood filler and it's really dark and the smell anyway, this will just help even more. I'm just going to apply one coat. And then I'm using Slick Stick on the hardware. Slick Stick is a bonding primer that you would use on metal or glass surfaces, anything shiny. And I'm not taking the hardware off because I know that this is an old cabinet. Once the hardware comes off, I just have this feeling that it's not gonna go on the same. And sometimes that happens. So it's better for me to just leave it on and paint it. Now I'm priming the entire outside and I'm using a sponge brush for this just because I want the primer to be nice and flat and I didn't really want any brush strokes poking through. This is just a paper plate that I tested some colors out and I found one that I really like. So now I have to mix it up and I'm using Mud Puddle tea rose, and a hint of plum crazy. I did go over a teeny tiny bit with my Plum Crazy, but I don't think it was that much that it will make a huge difference. Now I'm applying one coat to the entire piece. So this is my base coat. I'm going to do a little bit of blending. So I'm using sandbar in the middle of the cabinet doors and then on the sides. And for my base coat, I am gonna do a little bit of blending because I, I just get to test it out a little bit and see how far I want it to go or how it's gonna look. 
when you're applying your colors and they're wet, they are not the same colors as they're gonna be when they're dry. So I do like to give it a nice little test and see what everything's gonna look like on the last coat. It's almost dry and I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my second coat. I outline it with my pinkish color. I think it's like, it's a dusty rose, or I wanted it to be more mauve, but I wouldn't say that it is because it's not as purple. It's kind of mauve, <laughs> but we'll go with dusty rose. So I outline with the dusty rose, and then in the insides, I'm using sandbar. So, so far I've used two brushes and my water mister almost consistently because it's really dry and hot. The water mister will just keep the paint um, wet so that I can keep working it and moving it to blend it. Here I decided I like the location of my blend. I like how it's outward so now I'm taking a dry brush this is a third brush that I'm using and now I'm just blending with that third brush and I have a paper towel next to me so that if the color gets too much on the brush and starts to wet it I can wipe it dry again I bought eight of these corner wooden appliques on Amazon and I'm painting all eight of them in the dusty rose. Then I bought two of these medallions and they will go in the centers. So I'm painting the centers with the sandbar. Because they're wooden appliques, I need to spray them with some clear lacquer and that's because I want them to be non-porous so that I can apply some waxes and I can remove the wax without having any trouble. While I'm outside and spraying I'm gonna spray the legs. I bought these legs and they are really orangey gold. They're like um, the mirror finish but I want more of a brushed gold finish so I'm gonna use some spray paint. While everything's drying, I'm taking one coat of sealer and I'm applying it to the entire piece. Now I wanna add some furniture wax and I'm using Dixie Belle's Bestang Wax in brown. I also have a Wet Ones wipe. Now that I've put the sealer on, if I wanna add some wax in the corner details, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to wipe it off because the surface is um, non-porous. I don't want my piece to be dirty looking or antiqued too much but I do want there to be some depth and dimension and I find that using furniture wax is an excellent way to achieve that look. Now I'm applying the furniture wax over all eight appliques and I'm covering the entire area. I'm making sure that I'm getting in all the creases because then when I wipe back with my wet ones wipe, it's gonna stay in all those creases and that's where we're gonna get that depth and dimension on the appliques. 
One thing I love about Dixie Belle's Besting Wax is that it's water-based, so I can use a sealer over it. I can let it dry for like two days and then, or even a day, and then I can apply a sealer over it, so I've locked in that wax. I don't usually use it for sealing, but I do use it this way. For the finishing touch on the appliques, I'm gonna add gold gilding wax to all the raised details. And look how all those waxes really brought out these appliques. It really brought out the details and just made it sort of a little piece of art. I continue the same exact process with the two center appliques. Now to apply them, I'm just using some tight bond glue and a little brush and I did over pour on accident so I used a little bit too much but I just put some back in the tube now once I put it on a little bit of that glue is going to come out at the sides so I just take a little chip brush and just move that glue around until you can't see it anymore then I'm just going to put some weight on it and let them dry for a couple of hours. And while I have it tipped over, I might as well apply the feet. After I spray painted the feet, I did use the same clear lacquer to seal them. And of course, we need more final touches. <laughs> so I'm adding more furniture wax. And I'm just doing it with a teeny tiny brush. I'm just going on the outer edges and then I'm gonna use a tiny sponge brush to smudge the furniture wax. Don't want you to be able to see that there's wax on it so much. I just wanna create a tiny shadow and I love these sponge brushes for that. Then I'm just using an old t-shirt and cleaning it up a little bit. Then I started to paint the inside and I painted the back wall and then the sides in that pink color. But for, there is a shelf, I had stripped the shelf and sanded the shelf, painted it in sandbar. And now I'm gonna add a stencil with some of that, this is gemstone mousse. Um, the gemstone mousse is extremely easy to use when you're stenciling and you can even just like smudge it around. You don't have to um, blot, blot it. So I like the mousse for that. I waited about 24 hours and then I sealed the entire piece, top, bottom, inside, outside, with Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. Even went over all the details on the appliques just to make sure that everything is gonna be sealed in really nice. As long as your furniture wax, your gilding wax, and your mousse are all dry, I usually seal them all. The last step is new hardware. I bought this little latch from Amazon and I'll leave all the links in the description box to all the products that I used in this video. Here's a quick reminder of what it looked like before. And here it is after. I'm not gonna lie, I am in love. 
I love it so much and I see it in someone's dressing room or closet or office. You could put purses on the inside or maybe, you know, high heels or shoes. I just love it so much. And let me know what you think down in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts. hope you enjoyed the Ugly Duckling Challenge makeovers. I had so much fun being a part of this challenge. I want to say thank you to Corey from Desert DIY for hosting this. It was super fun to be a part of. I have some really fun stuff coming up next week. They even have a giveaway, so be sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you can get involved with that. Now go grab some popcorn, check out the playlist in the description box so you can binge watch all the Ugly Duckling videos. Enjoy. We'll see you next time. <laughs> so let's flip it. <laughs>